Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze the data that you collected for the positions of the moons of Jupiter. I've already collected approximately 20 to 25 data points, so now I'm going to analyze it. But first, it's always a good idea to save early and often. So let's go to File, Data, and Save, and save data to the file name the program gives you, or you can select No to change the file name. I called mine Titus, just to be cute, I guess. Uh, now that I've saved the file, I don't have to worry about the program crashing and losing all of my hard work. So it's time to analyze the data. Go to File, Data, and Analyze. It tells us to select a moon from the menu. It is probably easiest to select the longer period moons, either Ganymede or Callisto. I prefer Ganymede because for starting out, you can clearly see the sine curve for the position of the moon as we see it from a side view. You'll notice a gap in the data. There's a data point missing here, and there's, there are two data points missing here, and that's because of cloud cover where we could not observe the moons at that particular time. If we go to plot, we can choose plot type and show either a line plot or simply the points. I prefer the points because I think the lines obscure what we are trying to do. We want to fit a sine curve to the data, and those are not straight lines between the data points. So let's go to plot, fit sine curve, and set initial parameters. There are three things that it asks for. T0 represents a time when the curve appears to cross the horizontal axis. Now, I can never remember, does it want to look for a time when it's crossing the horizontal axis as the curve is going up or when the curve is going down? I'm going to choose up for now, although I have a feeling we may want to choose this point. I'm not sure, so let's try it. Clicking on this point, we see that that is the date 766.8. So let's type that in, 766.8. The period is the number of days between peaks. So let's select a peak. That's at 768.5. This peak is at 775.6. So if you subtract 775.6 from 768.4, we will get 7.2. The amplitude represents the peak of the moon relative to the center of Jupiter, or so the peak of the sine curve. Well, if I click here, I can see that the peak is at a value here of 7.63 Jupiter diameters. Oops, clicked again and got something a little different, didn't I? Looks like around 7. Point, I'll put type 7.56. We can adjust this later. 7.56 Jupiter diameters. Click OK. Hey, we're pretty close. My guess for T0 was right on. It is the time when the curve is going up and crossing the horizontal axis. We can shift this. As, we, as you see, when we adjust T0, it moves the sine curve left and right. So let's move it left until it looks like it's lining up on the data points pretty well. Adjusting the period stretches out the sine curve or squeezes the peaks together. So we can adjust this until it looks like it's going through most of the data points pretty well. It's not quite right. Let's see, that's looking, oh, that's looking pretty good. And now the amplitude adjusts the height of the sine curve. So let's adjust that until it goes through the points pretty well. There we go. There is a, a nice way of checking to see whether our curve fits the data points, and that's to look at what's called the RMS residual. It stands for root mean squared. But let's just look at this number, 9 times 10 to the minus 2. Remember the E means times 10 to the. So we have 9 times 10 to the minus 2. 
The smaller that number is, the better our curve fits the data. Watch, if I make the amplitude way off, that number, now it's climbed up to 1.1. And as I bring it down, we can see that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. 1 times 10 to the negative 1, and now it goes 9 times 10 to the negative 2. So that's pretty good. And now it's getting bigger again. So if I can find where that number is smallest, that gives me a real good idea um, on how well my curve fits the data. Okay, well that looks great. So what we need to record are the following two things in our spreadsheet. Uh, the period, which is 7.1352 days, and the amplitude, which is 7.5298 Jupiter diameters. You do not need to record all of those decimal places. The reason is that we will have some experiment, experimental error in our curve fit and in our uh, measurements. So if you want to just pick 7.135 days and 7.530 uh, Jupiter diameters, that's certainly sufficient. Okay, let's select another moon. Let's go with Callisto. As you can see, we do not have a full orbit, okay? We are really looking at approximately or a little more than half of an orbit. Again, we go to select, I'm sorry, we go to plot, fit sign curve set initial parameters. T0 is the A time, any time, when the curve is going up and crossing the horizontal axis. So if I make a good guess on this, it's going to cross the horizontal axis right about here. Let's click on that. 779.7 days. Or, or that's the date. The period is the time between peaks. Now this is a little bit challenging here because we only see one peak. Well, where will the other peak occur? The other peak will occur probably somewhere around in here. But rather than guessing, we can do it the following way. If going from peak to peak is one period, then going from peak to trough would be half a period. So let's measure the time between a peak and a trough and just double that. Well, this peak is occurring at 767.5 date. The trough is occurring at a date of 775.6. So if I subtract, take 775.6 minus 767.5, I will have, oh, looks like about 8.1. As, as the period, but that's not the period, that's half a period. So I have to multiply 8.1 times 2, and that'll give me 16.2 as the period. The amplitude is the height of the peak, and when I click on this peak, we can see that the height is at 13.2 Jupiter diameters. As you can see, those are just the initial guesses. They get us close enough where we can make fine adjustments. So I'll move this to the left a little bit. And I will stretch out the period. Looks like it needs to be stretched. And sometimes you have to adjust more than one thing. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And now the amplitude, but the amplitude looks like it's about right on anyway. So, all right, there, that is 7.37 times 10 to the negative two. That's the smallest RMS residual. And so that gives us a good value for the period and the amplitude of this sine curve. This means that the period of Callisto, uh, its orbit is 16.65 days, and it's the radius of its orbit, or the amplitude of the sine curve, is 13.2 Jupiter diameters. We should record those values. We'll put those into our spreadsheet and calculate the mass of Jupiter. 
Now it's your turn. Go ahead and try out Europa and try out IO. Those are much more difficult. As you can see, IO has a lot of curves, a lot of peaks and troughs. Uh, you're only really picking up about two data points per orbit. So in fact, those are a little bit more challenging to measure. But give it a shot.